back. Um, Raheem Sterling scored twice in Bulgaria, but he was also subjected, like some of the other players, to a lot of racist abuse. How did you think he and the other England players dealt with that situation on the night? Well, I think that UEFA make a step forward. No, they stopped the game twice or three times, so it's the first step. And after what happened in the future, well, we spoke many times about that, and always I had the same answer: fight every day against these kind of situations. One of the things they as a group had to speak about was the prospect of actually walking off the pitch, which would have been very difficult as well, given the score and everything. But as a manager, is that something that you would support if you were in charge of a team that was involved in such a situation with such a level of racist abuse? Everything we're going to do, uh, or we're doing or we're going to do in the future to help, to eradicate it, so welcome. So, But the players are not alone, the manager are not alone, the clubs are not alone. Also when everybody's involved in the Premier League in this case, in this country, with every country, in the UEFA and FIFA, uh, when we decide, we can do it. Alexander Zinchenko had a slightly different international break. He got engaged hours after Ukraine qualified for the Euros. Has he had an extra spring in his step this week since he came back? <laughs> now, congratulations from Alex and from uh, his future wife. And just finally, injuries. You said that you expected to have uh, De Bruyne, Stones, Mendy back after the international break. Is that still what you expect? Do they fit? Have you any problems? Yeah, some of them are, are, are better. Uh, Kevin is back and, and John training the last two days good. So, yeah. Mendy, Mendy, Mendy as well. Yeah. yeah. Mendy a little bit later, but as well, yeah. Pep, Palace are only two points behind you. How impressed have you been with the way that they've started the season? Well, I think since uh, Roy Hudson took over the team uh, three years ago, I think so, when uh, he took over with zero points and uh, he avoid, so he, he helped with his staff to be relegated in the championship. So I always make a, a really good season. So they have a incredible talent players, uh, physical, experienced guys uh, back and, and a lot of talent in the middle and up front. Last year, in January, I should say, you were seven points behind Liverpool. What do you think that you and your team learned about holding your nerve and, and not panicking when you're not on top? Every season is completely different. Every situation is different. So, results in right now, going or bad, not going to change any second, my opinion about my team. I know exactly what we have to do to come back at, and to be a team like, uh, like we want to be. Uh, but it's the past, and now we have to be focused to to try to increase our our game and play game, win games. Pep Simon Stone, BBC. Roy Hodgson's 72 now. Do you admire the enthusiasm he still has for the game, or is it something that you all have? If I, yeah, of course, I admire him. It's because he likes, and of course, there's one club who trusts him, but. If if he is still there, it's because he has the passion and and uh, and likes. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Honestly, seventy two years old, you have to be a lot of energy to convince the players and every day to be there. And still, you know, he does that. I know you're a long way off that, but can you imagine? I said many times no. <laughs> um, I, I realize you're the manager of Manchester City, but you are also associated with Barcelona. Could you just tell us your thoughts on El Clasico being cancelled or moved? No opinion. I don't know the reason why, so I have to ask Tebas or Federation. I don't know who decide that or government, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's happened because there must be something they worry. No, but honestly, I don't know the reason why. I Pep Don McGuinness, TalkSport. Uh, just you mentioned obviously De Bruyne and Mendy, they're back training, but how Sergio Aguero had a, a little bump this week? Is there any problem with him? Is he fine? No, the car. He's fine? The car is not fine, no. <laughs> but mentally he's fine, there's no problem with him? No. And just a word, I'm sure you've seen the, the festive period now, the fixture list, um, with what you have to do over the Christmas period, which is always a busy, busy time. Less recovery for yourselves than Liverpool. What do you think of that? It's what it is. So since I came here, every season it's happened the same. 
So the broadcasters are the bosses in this situation. So, so the concept is not about in this fixture period. So I love to play in, in boxing days, in winter time when everybody's a stop, the families, kids go into the stadium and enjoy the games. I like it. The problem is the same. So now Neymar is injured again after that because they travel to friendly games in Nigeria or whatever and far away and come back and we don't protect the players. The system don't protect the players. It's too much. Honestly, it's too much. Well, another day we, they, we will have more, uh, you know, we will have more recovery than the other one. So it's what it is. So maybe the broadcasters are fans for some club, but I, I listen. This referee, this referee, we have to play tomorrow. We have to play tomorrow. So after we have a meetings with the with the Premier League, with the managers, with the UEFA, and they are so glad. Nice pictures, good cafe. It doesn't matter. So we have to play. We're going to play. Hola, Pep. Paul Vallus. Um, I, I can imagine that you are aware right now of the situation that there is in Barcelona and in Catalonia. You spoke in a public statement last Monday, but um, I just want to know how you lived the events that have happened the last four nights and how you see the situation right now. That's it. Well, uh, I know exactly today, like it's going to happen in, in my country, in Catalonia, how incredible the people specifically is walking from all around the Catalonia to go in afternoon in Barcelona to give support to the nine, seven political prisoners and, and two social activists who were in jail more than 100 years altogether. So I think if it was not, the people was not convinced, it was not fair, millions and millions of people would not walk, you know, to the big city from Catalonia to give support to these people, for the exiled people who cannot come back at home. So, so the statement it was, I read, I read from, from, from people from Catalonia, just sitting and talk, please sitting and talk. I think the international community must help us to solve the conflict from Catalonia, Spain. And the only thing is someone, one mediator outside to help us to sit in and talk, sit in and talk. So th this arrived, this situation arrived. Sometimes it's incredible to think about that, but this situation arrived in the last night what happened and, and uh, personal friends that they are nine years in a jail will be nine years in jail for, to vote. So what they ask is try to vote and and the people start to go in bad, go in bad, and that is the situation. That's why it's not 10 people or 12 or 14, so millions, millions of people today, like it happened for the last year specifically, go in there to give support the, this person, these people and their families. And hopefully, you know, Europe make a step forward, Britain, and help us to resolve this conflict. <coughs> Hi, Pep and Rigsil, <coughs> Catalonia Radio. Uh, following what my colleague uh, asked you, um, do you think more public personalities committed uh, to democracy, not only in Catalonia, uh, also in important countries like England, should say something about that situation? Thank you. I think so, honestly. But uh, normally everyone looks his own situations and when it no involves too much, the people look right, left. So don't, 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 we, we need it. We need Europe to, to solve this, this, this conflict. We need Europe. I think it's arriving time that people don't trust each other too much. Spain, Catalonia, Catalonia, Spain, it will be good like, a, like someone from Europe. That's why my statement was clear. It was just sitting and talk, please sitting and talk. So we have this ability, human beings, you know, the animals cannot do that, but we have the ability to do that, to sit and talk and try to solve it. So, and always I will read the manifesto or whatever they ask me about defend the human rights. Here in, in, in Alsasua or in Madrid about any issue or whatever, if uh, they w they need me, they can count on me to defend the human rights. Always with their here in Arabic countries, whatever. 
It's we have to fight against racism, that discrimination of gender, discriminations or uh, um, equality between men and women. I will be there all the time, no matter where and when.